Continuing our conversation with Long Beach City Councilman Gary DeLong. This one is going to be up close and personal with our councilman. He's been in office for six years. Gary, you recently announced that you're running for the United States Congress. I am. Why? You know, because I think our country's headed in the wrong direction. And I think both parties feel that way. I'm a very moderate person, but our economy's in the ditch. We're not creating jobs. We're, we're passing huge amounts of debt onto our kids and grandkids. We need to do things differently. Now, you know, it's a big leap from council to Congress. It Very is. few people have done it, and usually you go through the state legislature. Now, I can certainly understand why you don't want to go through the state legislature, which has truly become dysfunctional, and why anyone wants to be in the legislature right now is, is somewhat of a mystery. But So you're eliminating that problem and running for Congress, but our federal government and Congress is dysfunctional now. You know, it's interesting. I guess what I would say is I'm running for an office where I feel I can make a difference. I don't think I can make a difference in Sacramento. I think it's so broken, I can't make a difference. But I feel I feel differently about the federal There level. are only 80 assembly people in Sacramento and 40 senators. In Congress, there are 435 Congress people. Yes. And you're, let's say you're successful in this race, you're one. How do you think you can change? The tone there is awful now. Uh, people do not compromise. There are no moderates. You get there, you'll probably be the sole moderate in the whole Congress. Uh, you look to your left, you look to your right, and it's very lonely in the middle. I, I agree with you. The rhetoric is that way. But having met with a number of individuals, members of Congress, both Democrats and Republicans, that may be the way they speak in the mic, but that's not the way they are as people. And I, I, if I didn't think I could build consensus and work collaboratively across the political spectrum, I, I wouldn't do it. But I, I think I can. And, I, and I'll show you, I mean, you look at Long Beach, I'm one Republican and eight Democrats on the city council and a Democrat mayor, and I still have the ability to work with people and generate consensus. But Congress in Washington, it's larger than life. It it's is larger. bigger than any it person. Is. And bigger issues. And you want to fly to Washington every weekend, every week, and come back every weekend and go through all that. One lone, let's say, rational voice in this loggerhead uh, do you I, really think you can make a difference? I, I really do, and, but, and I don't think I'm one lone rational voice. I don't. I, I agree with many of the things that Paul Ryan is putting forward from a budget perspective and balancing the budget and reducing the, the national debt. Now, a number of people urge you to run for mayor of Long Beach, and uh, if Mayor Foster is termed out mm -hmm. after eight mm -hmm. years and decides not to run as a write-in, uh, someone else will become mayor, and, yes. and you'd be an ideal one. You know, I, thank you for that, but, but I believe, and I, and I think you share this, you need to, in order to do a good job, you've got to be passionate about what you do. Yes, that's true. I, I'm, not, I'm passionate about being a city council member and, and working out in the community. I'm passionate about going to Congress and trying to fix the economy. I, I'm not passionate about mayor, and, and let me tell you, one of the reasons I'm not passionate is I think we have a number of credible people in Long Beach that could do a, as, equal, a better, as good or better job than I can. As mayor of well, the city. and some others think that other Did candidates you know one could I do like a, or no? a, a, a good job in Congress too. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You have several opponents, including Senator Lowenthal, uh, a former Congressman Steve Kuykendall, and yes. a recently announced Orange County candidate. That's correct. So you're going to have to. We have the open primary system now, so the two highest, whatever party, yes. then go into the runoff. Yes, and I look forward to that public discussion, explaining my views, what I think that we need to do to fix the country. And, and I think after you look at all four of us, hopefully I'll have your support. And uh, do you plan to uh, fund uh, your campaign with your own funds? No, I don't. I, I think that's the kiss of death. I, th I think if you can't go out in the community and raise funds for your campaign, there's a message there. That means you're not who the community wants to represent them in Washington. Well, you've certainly gotten a lot of good endorsements. Governor Duke Majin, uh, Supervisor Don Kanabi, uh, Order to Laura Dowd, who will be our guest next week, uh, Ed Royce. Congressman Ed Royce, yes, and Congressman Dan Lundgren, among others. Our former congressman from down here. Yes. So um, it's a new district. We yes, have it is. redistricting reform, and uh, uh, it's, uh, it's basically Long Beach plus a bit of Orange County. Well, it's 60% it's LA County, 53% is Long Beach, the other 7% is Avalon, Signal Hill, and a piece of Lakewood. The other 40% is in Orange County, which is the communities of Rossmore, Los Alamitos, Cypress, portions of Westminster, Stanton, and Garden Grove, and I've been spending a lot of time in Orange County recently. And you have a lovely wife and a young child. Are they we aboard do. on this thing? Yeah. With daddy in Washington and not at home as much? This is a team family effort. You can't, you can't do it by yourself. We're yeah. in this together. Well, of course, Congressman Rohrbacher has triplets, and uh, if he manages to He do does. It, so. He does. <laughs> yes. He has his hands full, I might add. Y yes, he does. Uh, 
Well, uh, give us your sense of, of politics generally. Uh, it seems to many of us that the country is not heading in a good direction. No, and I, uh, I uh, voted for President Obama, and I have to confess a certain disappointment in what the results we've gotten so far. Of course, he inherited a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. And I think the Republicans right now have more of an interest in the economy not improving because that is a strong campaign issue. And do you put country first or do you put party first? What put country. I clearly you put country first. I, I, I don't think you have to hesitate on that. Okay. I do agree with you. We're not going the same direction. And I think, as you also alluded, we're too polarized. Yeah. We, we need to come more to the middle. But I also think we have a balance with the, the House and the Senate in one party, perhaps the administration, maybe the other party, that we're going to had that ability to work together. But, but clearly, one of the problems is, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you shouldn't have any more government than you can afford. And today, the cost of the federal government has doubled in 10 years. And by the way, that's two different party administrations, so yeah. this isn't Republicans or Democrats. Yeah. It's doubled in the last 10 years. You can't afford that. And the biggest problem I see is, as Americans, one of the things we take pride in is we pass a country to the next generation that's better than the one we yeah. inherited. I don't think you could say that today. I don't think you could say we're on the right path and we're going to give a better country to our kids and our grandkids. And even the president admitted that we are not better off today than four years ago when he took office, which is a, is a candid admission, for which I respect him, but it's also true. It uh, true. Things are not good right now. They're not, but they're not all his fault either. No, and they're not. If we had someone else in the White House, I'm not sure. Yes, we did. Right? So yes, let's, we did. Let's be honest about that. Well, you know, l let me conclude the segment by saying I, uh, the democratic process does not work unless we have good people running for a whole variety of offices. And, and I consider you uh, a you. good person and, and as are your opponents. And, and I think it's good that good people run for office because if, they, if that doesn't happen, then things go to hell in a handbasket, but they seem to be going to a hell in a handbasket anyway. But let me say good, reasonable people that can work and play well with others. Yes. You do need to get along at the end of the we, day. We need less of does not play well yeah. with others in Congress. I agree. At, at all, and, four, and, at and all levels of government. Okay, yes. okay. okay, we'll be back with the rest of our show after these messages. Welcome to McKenna's on the Bay, where fine dining is complemented with a breathtaking view. McKenna's is a restaurant of incredible ambiance, providing service and cuisine with style, class, and romance. The menu offers a variety of appetizers, serious seafood, prime steaks, an oyster bar, and specialty entrees for either lunch or dinner. McKenna's on the Bay features patio dining, nightly entertainment, and two banquet facilities. No matter what your occasion, McKenna's on the Bay is like being on vacation. Join us today at McKenna's on the Bay. Founded in 1976, Polly's Gourmet Coffee is Southern California's most complete gourmet coffee store. Polly's has the best tasting coffee, freshly roasted every day right in the store. Plus a wide selection of teas, an in-house bakery, espresso bar, patio dining, and more. We also offer Wi-Fi, free internet access for all of our customers. Our nationwide clientele agree, when it comes to coffee, there's only one name to remember, Polly's. 4606 East 2nd Street, welcoming you into Belmont Shore. We've been discussing the political process with our guests, and I firmly believe we need capable, honest people running for public office to make democracy work. We need people who will put the country first ahead of their party. We need people who are willing to take a bullet for principle. There are very few profiles in courage these days in our elected officials. We need people who want to go there to do something, not just to get reelected. One's reelection should not be the most important thing uh, in a person's calculus of how to vote. And uh, holding that office should not be the crowning achievement of their life either. And so, Gary, thank you for participating in this discussion. And uh, I, I wish you well in your efforts. And uh, thank you. even though we'd like to keep you at home, if, uh, if Washington is your uh, goal, uh, certainly good luck in your campaign. I'll be working on your behalf either way. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us. Please be with us next week for the next edition of Straight Talk. Good night, everyone. Straight Talk has been brought to you by Southern California Edison, the Press-Telegram, and remember, Straight Talk is viewable worldwide 24-7 at straighttalktv.com.